Hi, my name is Simon Yokushis and today we're gonna have a look at Nuke's Terminal Mode. Nuke's Terminal Mode is very powerful because it lets you do things in an automated fashion. Now, these are things that you can most of the time also do in Nuke's Interactive Mode, but there are situations where you don't need to launch Nuke's Interactive Mode and it's much more convenient and faster to do that in Terminal Mode. The Terminal Mode becomes very powerful when you need to batch process a bunch of jobs. Now, of course, there are things that are easier to do in an interactive mode, so when using the graphical user interface. And of course, there are even things that only make sense to do in Nuke's interactive mode. For instance, when it comes to paint and rotoscoping work. This would be rather complicated or impossible to accomplish in terminal mode. But the terminal mode is definitely very powerful as it lets you automate certain things. For instance, let's say you would need to render elements out of your comms or create slate images, or even when creating proxies. These are all good candidates for the terminal mode. And there are of course a lot more situations where using the terminal mode is a good choice. Now we'll have a look at creating a basic proxy creator using the terminal mode in a different video. This tutorial is more of an overview of how to launch Nuke in terminal mode and use it to create a small comp and render it out. So let's get started. Now keep in mind that you need a Nuke license to run in terminal mode. The terminal mode is not accessible in the non-commercial version of Nuke. Now we can start Nuke's terminal mode using the terminal on our machine. So let's launch our terminal. If you're running on Windows, this would be the command prompt, which you launch by navigating to the Windows Start button. And then you can type in cmd for a command. In order to use Nuke in terminal mode, we simply need to use the absolute path of the Nuke's executable and append certain flags to it. So let's browse to Nuke's executable. On my machine, it is located in User, Local, and then the Nuke version folder and nuke, and the version. So let's drag this file into our terminal, and this will paste the absolute path of this executable into our terminal. Now, nuke provides multiple command line attributes that we can set. The one that we're interested in is the dash "-t", flag. So let's write dash "-t", in our terminal. Now, as already mentioned, this doesn't work with the non-commercial version. So you would need a full license to run nuke in terminal mode. Now, depending on your license, you will get a license error as shown here because Nuke is not able to find a license. If you get the same license error, you'll need to tell Nuke to use the interactive license when running in terminal mode. In order to do so, we can set another flag dash i. So let's hit the up arrow to retrieve the last command and append dash i. Now we're running in terminal mode. Excellent. And here we can basically do anything that we can also do in Nuke script editor. So let's for instance get all notes. So let's simply write nuke.allNotes and get a list of all notes. Now there's a viewer node present here, although I haven't created one. This is the same behavior that we get when we launch nuke in a GUI session. This is simply because the default template.nk file got loaded, which included a viewer node. Let's remove that node. So nuke.delete, nuke.allNotes with the index of zero, which deletes the first node of our list. Let's check nuke.allNotes again. And the list is empty. Perfect. So let's start populating our node graph with some nodes and render something out. Now, although there is no such graphical node graph, we can still create nodes and manipulate them. Let's, for instance, create a checkboard and animate a blur. To do so, we need to create a few nodes, set up some node connections, animate some knobs, and finally render everything out. First, let's create a checkerboard. So let's write checker equals node checkerboard2, which is the current checkerboard class. Simply writing checkerboard would create a legacy checkerboard node, which is not what we want, so keep that in mind. Next, let's create a blur node, connect it to our checkerboard and animate its blur size. So let's write blur equals node blur. And to connect it to our checkerboard, we can use the set input function blur.setInput, and zero is the first input, and we connect it to the checkerboard, which is stored in the checker variable. Next, let's animate the blur size. First, we need to set the size knob animated. So let's write blur size dot set animated. Next, we can set some keyframes. For the sake of simplification, let's simply set two keyframes and let Nuke do the keyframe interpolation. We can use the built-in function setValueAdd. So blur size set value add, where the first argument is the value. Let's set it to zero, 
And the second argument is the frame that we would like to set the keyframe on. Let's set it to 1001. And let's set another keyframe of value 100 at frame 1010. So blur size, set value at 100, 1010. Finally, we need a write node to render out our comp. So let's type write equals nuke.create node, write. And connect it to our blur node. So write.set input and connect it to our blur node. Let's create a test folder on our desktop. So let me quickly create a new tab in my terminal, cd into my desktop, create a new folder, and cd into it. And let's print the current working directory. So that's the absolute path of our test folder. So let's copy this path and assemble our render path for the file knob. So let's type in write file dot set value and paste in our path and call it test and add a padding of four. And let's render it out as a JPEG sequence. Finally, to write out our comp, we can use nuke.execute. The first argument of this function is the node to execute, which is our write node. And let's render from 1001, which is the second argument, to 1010, which is the last frame to render, and hit enter. The frames are being rendered. And here you have it, an animated blur sequence that was completely created using nuke's terminal mode without launching nuke's graphical user interface. Now, you might think that was quite a bit of effort to create something that simple. And you're probably right, but it shows the potential of using the terminal mode. Now, the terminal mode really shines if you need to automate things, because then it becomes really efficient to code things once and reuse the code to generate multiple elements at once. Let's, for instance, say we need to create hundreds and hundreds of elements. You could do that in an interactive session, but this can quickly get tedious and is error prone if you do that by hand. In these cases, it's much more efficient and quicker to do that in terminal mode. In another tutorial, we'll have a look at how to create a proxy generator, where you simply need to specify the folder of the file sequence, and the rest will be handled by the automation. This saves you lots of time in creating the required node structure yourself, setting up the knobs and rendering it out yourself. Finally, let's have a quick look at launching Nuke using an alias. Now, I'll create a dedicated tutorial to show you how to create aliases on all operating systems. Once it's finished, I'll add the link to the description of this tutorial. So let's quickly just have a look here in Linux for now. If I cd into my user folder and make a quick ls and showing all files, we can see that there's a .bashrc file. In here, we can set a so-called alias. Using this alias in our terminal, we can then use this as a shortcut to launch Nuke. So the alias is called Nuke. And then on the right-hand side of the equal sign, we can define what we want to do when executing the nuke alias. In here, we can simply add the absolute path of nuke's executable, as we've already done so in a minute ago, to launch nuke in terminal mode. If we now simply enter nuke-i-t, we'll start nuke in terminal mode, without the need to specify the absolute path of the nuke executable, which is quite handy. And we can also simply write nuke, which will then launch an interactive nuke session. Okay, that was a brief tutorial of how to access Nuke's terminal mode and how to work inside it to create a comp and render it without using an interactive Nuke session. If you have any questions, please post them below and I'll try to answer them. If you liked this tutorial, please give a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to get news about new and upcoming tutorials. And as always, if you would like to see a future tutorial about a specific topic, just let me know. Again, my name is Simon Nukoshis and thanks for watching.